Welcome to Living Off the Van. We're the Nolders, Henry and Sarah, along with our three kids, Nyoka, Kiana and Louie. We've packed up our everyday lives to travel Australia with no known end date. Watch and subscribe to Living Off the Van to follow our adventures and see all the amazing places we go. I'm holding on to something better than anything I've ever known. Made it finally to uh, Devil's Marbles. Might have been easier when we had you in the carrier, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, get somewhere. We've gone 20 meters. No, no we go this way. Come on. This way. Just waiting on our camp spot for later. Come and check out the couple of the walks, so it's nice and cool. Just tomorrow morning, we'll probably have a sleep in. Come sit up here at sunset and have a beer. What's a BYO coffee, is it? Yes, essential. Far in your shadow. You gonna get him? It's actually a beautiful morning though. So we're here at Devil's Marbles, also known as Kalu Kalu, and we're doing the second walk and this is the view. Nyoka and I are going for the Norku walk here at the Devil's Marbles. It's a 4k round walk. Uh, we left, Louis was asleep and Kai was watching a movie so we left them at the van with Henry. So you can get free Wi-Fi at the day use area where you park here uh, I'm assuming that is because to get a permit to camp uh, it it or a yeah book a campsite here you need to do it online on the NT park site uh, and I think a lot of people just turn up and are like oh no I don't have service I can't book it but there's kind of no excuses because you can just go up a K or two just up to that uh, little day use area and you can use the Wi-Fi and you can get online. But 
one broke and fell down there. We're just getting back to our camp now. It said 4K walk, hour and a half. It took us about 45 minutes. So yeah, we'll go have some lunch now. Well, you can have dogs or pets, but only in the day use areas. Uh, we actually passed people walking along the tracks out in the park um, around the marbles with multiple dogs. Don't you just like that annoys me when people break rules like that and don't respect um, the lands they're on. We're making chocolate cookies together. He's going to eat all the cookie dough. He's going to mm -hmm. eat the chocolate chips. Have a seat, you silly billy. Ooh. He's going to eat the chocolate chip. Oh, yeah, the chocolate <laughs> chip. Are they ready? I guess you can leave that too. Devil's Marbles Campground. We're going to head south a little bit more, get some service, uh, and then it's oh, it's about eight o'clock in the morning, so we'll pull up somewhere, spend a little bit of time with some service, and then do some groceries that we couldn't get at Ten Creek in Alice, um, and then we'll find at camp somewhere making our way to the East McDonald Ranges. Uh, that campsite was really nice, really quiet. Um, stars were absolutely amazing. And they got a few walks around there, not too long. Uh, biggest one was 4Ks and it only took uh, Nyoka and I 45 minutes. So. Good little spot for families. Uh, small little walks, not not really climbing or anything. Um, but yeah, good spot if you want to check out Devil's Marbles. Uh, it's very ideal to stay at that campground. We're just heading towards Alice area uh, and we come across someone needing help with a tire um, or something broken. 
So Henry pulled over to help. I think he said something like the valve on his tire broke or something and Henry's got spare ones or something like that. We're just about 280 k's north of Alice. And yeah, we just went to stop at this rest area to have a little break and the kids can have a snack and there's service here. So we're gonna um, make a few phone calls and things we need to do. And yeah, we drove into this rest area and lucky we did because we helped this guy. You were patient, love. to see but it does say no service there just come in the van anyway if you're ever out bush and you need service mm -hmm. you go over here and you stick your phone in the cradle in that red cradle and watch what it does yeah. maybe on this side here oh look you got service you got one bar it's only 3g though very useful You'd have to leave it there though when you make your phone call. Yeah, we just pulled up here and chucked some rubbish in the bins and yeah, we'll just keep going. Too many flies here. <laughs> They're shocking. We want to have a walk and stretch his legs, but he's getting a on, This way. Did it work? Yeah, it did work. What? The modem? Nah, the thing. Oh, it's just your phone. It's only one bar of 3G, so you'd only be able to make a phone call. Or send a text or something. Yeah. Oh my god, fly! Yeah, no, we're not staying here. They're shocking. We've just pulled up to the Big Man Walk and Art Gallery. Looks like it's closed, uh, but we're going to go for a walk and look at the big uh, statues anyways. I was really hoping it was open because I wanted to go look at the art. Hmm. Maybe it might be open uh, when we pass through going back up north. So fingers crossed, but we'll go for the walk anyways. Don't know if it has like a story or anything behind it. But what, what do you done. think of the statue? It's big. Well, he keeps looking at it. Boy, who's that? We've just pulled up to a free camp on wiki camps i think it's called hemi's camp or something along the stewart highway just about 30 minutes north of oh flies um alice so we're just going to sit up here for the night and then tomorrow uh, make our way to the east mcdonald rangers but we're gonna light a fire and chill here <coughs> Yeah, one other thing, we 
where we were at the statues, I think it would have been about 27 or 28 degrees. We've just driven, what, another... Oh, it wouldn't even be an hour, probably half, 45 minutes down the road and the temperature's like 18 degrees, like it dropped real quick. Yeah. Might be a cold night. Yeah, I reckon um, track is in a cardigan. <laughs> bit chilly, bit chilly up here. All right, we'll hang out some washing because we did some washing while we were driving. everyone we just um, finished packing up and cleaning up ripper of a spot to stop last night it's uh, fairly cold this morning we're all wearing jumpers and trackies so uh, just on our fourth load of washings I did one last night and one this morning and we're gonna head into Alice Springs now and restock food water fuel the whole lot and then we'll make our way out to the East McDonald Ranges this afternoon. So we'll see how we go in Alice Springs. This is the first time Sarah and the kids have all been there. We'll see how they go with that experience. But we are going to come back to Alice for a couple of nights stay. So we'll see how we go. Um, I'm looking forward to East, East McDonald Ranges. I reckon that place is going to be amazing. So well, let's see how we go. The morning ritual of getting him into his seat, he hates it now. Oh. <gasps> Look. <laughs> oh. Look at these filthy ass red oh. boots. It's like red dirt in everything. It kind of added a bit luxury when we were on the east coast, but anyway. But if you want to go and see the outback, this is what you got to put up with. Yeah, I don't know when we're not going to be on red dirt or rocks for a while. Probably but Gerald and maybe. Yeah, but we'll still wash the van in between when we can, just to keep it clean. Yeah. Yeah, I've been, we've both been cleaning the van constantly just to keep keep the, the red out of the van as much yeah. as you can. like. The reason it gets in there is when you walk in and out of it, you, you just, you, yeah, you can't stop this stuff. So yeah. uh, we'll just try and suppress it and minimize it as best we can, but we'll probably get to a point in four or five weeks time. We'll just, we'll just give like, up. Yeah, we'll just be like, oh, well, kids are in and out of the van. Louie will be running around outside, no shoes on, goes in the van. So I don't know. And it kind of sticks to you. Like it doesn't come off like real easy. No, so. no, like even wash. I think there's like a permanent imprint on the bottom of my feet of red dirt. And I've been wearing <laughs> shoes outside, so old thongs, I suppose that's why. Yeah. But um, yeah, we'll go into town. We're going to wash the car and van while we're in there. So I've sort of looked up and done street view to try and figure out which one's going to allow us to actually get the van in because mm. we haven't washed this thing since. <laughs> Since Emerald. Did you wash the van at Rocky? Oh, nah, no, we washed it at Emerald. There was a spot there where you could sort of nose in, but you had to back out. So. Oh, the Emerald was after. No, I didn't even wash it there. I washed the car there. I didn't wash the van. I don't know. Jeez, I don't I know, know where I washed it last. Uh, Bribey Island at the caravan park. <laughs> yeah, that but was it was kind of raining time. as well, though. Yeah. We've been, we've been in a lot of rain, so we haven't needed to wash it. And then bitumen, and obviously the last little bit we've been on dirt. Look at this, filthy. Can't wait to get all that off. That's Roddy. Cat Roddy, does the door look with all the fingerprints and <laughs> stuff? 
Oh, so well. Off-road van for a reason, I suppose. All right, I better check everything. Probably, we're probably gonna drive on the dirt road. No, later. I'm hoping it's gonna rain today, well, this afternoon, so that it'll, all the red dirt's <laughs> yeah. not done. Anyways, we are, we are we're straight, well, just we're... check, um, just gonna head into TJM and check out what they've got um, GPS wise and emergency beacon wise. Yes, um, so we've been using yeah. our phones and it's it's okay but yeah when we get really really remote which we haven't really been yet then we're really going to struggle for navigation so we're going to do one of, yeah one of them and and some sort of recovery beacon yeah. in case we we break down and we can be yeah, like a bit like an epurb sort of thing but one you can text on hopefully we can find yeah. one more. so we'll see what they got We just don't want to uh, find ourselves in a situation that we're, we're all in trouble, so... Yeah, I don't know, sort of... Even if it's a thousand dollars, it's probably worth it. Come on. This way. At least he knows to fall. No. This way. We're just on our way out to our camp out at Trofino Gorge. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, we've just pulled into Emily Gap to check this out. Just oh, a couple of minutes out of Alice. So this place would just be absolutely stunning um, when there's a little bit of water through here. It's beautiful. I love that um, sentence or that, that line they've got here. It says, welcome to our country. Respect it by not taking anything, not touching anything and not leaving anything behind. Accept your footprints. There is heaps of stuff that's washed up because they recently had floods through here. You can't so, take, like, photos and stuff. Um, 
I don't think they're swimming and stuff obviously through here at the moment because it's a bit um needs to be cleaned up a tad but beautiful. are watching TV and I'm having a lazy day here's a little bit of a tip for you we don't get any internet here or anything and before I left I used to have a heap of kids movies on uh, MP4 and I've put them onto a USB and I've got it behind the TV plugged into the TV so it works straight off that so in these situations to entertain this one and probably this one we yeah just let them watch TV all day it's been a bit of a loss so yeah uh, well we the kid, the girls have Netflix and Disney Plus and stuff on their iPads, which before we go out of service area, we always tell them to download <laughs> TV shows fun. or movies. Uh, but then obviously you can't download on the TV uh, Netflix, so we have a USB um, with movies, which is really good when we don't have service. And Louis loves, Louis obsessed with Frozen. We watch that about four times a day when we're in the van. He'll watch some when he's eating breakfast because it keeps him still and entertained. Um, and then before bed, he'll watch it. Uh, nice last way. night, he woke up at like 1.30 a.m. and was up till about 4 a.m. And that. I don't know why. I don't know if he's teething or... He was just hypo us. So he just laid in bed and we watched Frozen. So, Everyone's yeah. sick of Frozen. Oh! Um... But I also download like movies and TV shows on my phone because Henry's always saying, download all your shows while we've got internet. And then last night I laid in bed to watch um, the TV shows I like to watch and pulled my headphones out and stuff. And and Henry's like sitting there because we're all watching our TV shows or movies and he's like, I have none because he didn't download any for himself. She's I'm always doing stuff. Like oh, yesterday, yeah. yesterday was nuts. You lose a whole day in getting fuel, water, like even gas. We didn't do gas yesterday, but in yeah, food. Oh. And then once you've done all those, because it's a weekday, you've got always like write a list of things on my phone and my notes for um 
like just little tiny things you might need like whether it's like a packet of screws or foam tape for for the car or, or just just any just little batteries, thing like random random things, stuff yeah. That you're like, oh yeah, you, if you don't write that list, when you get to town, you always forget what you need. So, yeah, like, <coughs> whenever you got a day like yesterday, just you lose a whole day. Doesn't matter how quick you try and do it. Like yesterday, we wanted to get alcohol and we'd finished absolutely all of our jobs i think it was like 1 30 and we had to wait till 2 p.m to get to the bottle shop on a on a tuesday like or a monday yeah monday, i think yeah it was a monday it was tuesday isn't today wednesday i don't know <laughs> we don't know what we don't know what <laughs> it's wednesday so yeah we we had to wait around for that so we ended up going <laughs> Going and getting some lunch. <laughs> Someone's number one. Yeah, look at his mullet. His mullet? He won't let you show it because he'll constantly He wants to be the in the GoPro. <laughs> say, say bye. Say bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> Don't you fall. Ready? Say bye. Say bye. Bye to the GoPro. Bye. Say bye. 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 <laughs> We're just going to go for a drive and have a look around what's going on around here because it's just raining still. Um, might as well be in the car if it's raining. Can't really walk anywhere, but it looks like it's nearly, it's, it's eased up a fair bit. What the kids put in the nav when you're not watching. Too bad for them we don't have service. <laughs> Louis loves corrugation. We just popped into the Ross River campgrounds. It's actually not too bad. Nice and grassy area there. So that would have been all right to stay in there. They had power and water yeah. too, if you wanted it. But this, this gorge looks nice. I can't even see it. We're just going for a drive out near the um, resort here. Just past the resort through to the campground area and then out the back. What's yeah. the gorge? That. Oh, look at the pretty cold. <laughs> it's uh, Apparently. saying 10 degrees outside. So, Louis is all cute for cuddles. Dad and Mum are dressed for the pub, although there is no pub to be going to. I'm dressed for. We did. <laughs> I was hoping there was going to be a pub today, but I don't think there's going to be. I think Henry was thinking he's getting a counter meal somewhere. Yeah. Might just have to drive back to Alice. Stop! Ah, we won't be doing that. We'll be back there tomorrow. Just putting the ties down a bit. Put your iPad on. <sighs> Wouldn't leave their iPads in the van, so they want to um, charge them no, in the car. The distance is 1.5 kilometers return, so there and back. Time is one hour and it's easy, so. Well, oh, given right. that it's like 10, 10 degrees, degrees. <laughs> we've got a bottle of water, that'll do. 
and pass the water that's full from the sky. <laughs> it stopped raining, which is good. And art here have survived for hundreds, perhaps thousands of years. They are easily damaged by people who don't understand their value. Yep. You can help protect this site. Don't touch the petroglyph. Petroglyphs. Glyphs. I think Glyphs you had it right. Art. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. Look at that. It's just how red it is. Looks cool. Yeah. Goodness, look at that. Mm. One, a butterfly crawling along, coming out, testing mm. one, it's 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 So cool. Look at that part. I was hoping you would actually tell us. You that one, did ya? You? You're allowed to film these, surprisingly. Yeah. This says, like, you know, don't, don't touch. touch or climb or anything on them and hope that everyone respects that. So we've just come over um, the waterhole, the creek here, at the gorge. And um, the sign says that Aboriginal women children and uninitiated men should not pass this water hole um, so you shouldn't go any further along the track to towards the gorge um, so we're going to turn around and go back to the car uh, just because I don't want to disrespect their traditions and I don't want any bad spirits or anything following us um, so we're going to respect that and we're going to turn around. So another reason why we obviously didn't want to do that uh, walk. Uh, when we're about a K out from the gorge campground there where you can drive up to we had about 10 red tail black cockatoos fly across the front of the car and kind of stop us. So we stopped and, and had a look and I thought that was a bit weird because in the middle of Australia, um, my that. totem oh, and the kids, um, yeah, there were 10 red tail black cockatoos that kind of stopped us in our tracks and when we were walking to the gorge and then we found that sign that said don't you know aboriginal women and children can't walk beyond this point i kind of put two and two together so that was probably a sign that said to us that well you know don't um don't do that walk because we don't know the stories of this country here and I don't know why you can't do it or what's happened there, but um, we definitely listen and hear and feel for signs like that. There's also been a crow following us as well. Yeah, everywhere we go, everywhere we have we a go. crow um, following us. And I said to Henry, it's probably my pop because pop's nickname, everyone called him crow. And um, everywhere we go, rain, hail, shine, um, we could be in the most remote place and there is a crow, um, whether it's sitting on our fence at our campsite, um, flies in, flies out, it's just everywhere we go. So I think he's following us on our trip and probably looking after us and protecting us. Um, yeah. Uh, if you're wondering what I mean by the red tailed black cockatoo is uh, my totem. So I'm from Swan Hill on the Murray River in Victoria and I'm a Wamba Wamba woman um, and that's the totem 
to our mob there. So the Wamba Wamba people, the red tailed black cockatoo. We never really see them anywhere. And this yeah, is the I, first time we've seen them in the wild. Like I've lived in Swan Hill my whole life and I've never seen our actual totem bird there in the bush or in the wild there so i've seen him a few other places around uh, victoria maybe but yeah not not actually at home so i thought it was really weird that we we're driving and we saw a whole group of them just drive like in the front of our car fly in front of our car as we're driving and there's not a single other person out here driving or anything so um yeah, it just gives you that kind of feeling to look out for something or maybe it's, yeah, some type of signal. So, yeah, just put that in the back of your mind and you end up kind of piecing a few things together and if something doesn't feel right, it doesn't feel right. So, One of the main reasons they're not around Swan Hill anymore is their food source is no longer there anymore. So the native vegetation has severely changed since European settlement but their main food source is I think it's a pine tree a seed out of the pine tree there used to be hundreds of them back back before European settlement but the, now there's there's pretty much none there there's, there might be one tree left in a little park in town but yeah they, they, I haven't seen red tailed cockatoos down around the Mallee region for a long time yeah Either that or we're just not looking in the right places, <laughs> like yeah. the places where you go, they just aren't or, yeah. A so, little, bit, little yeah. bit bizarre, just, just a handful of things that have happened this morning that's just sort of rustled the feathers a little bit and then we'll just, we'll just move on from that area there and keep going. Yep. It's nice and dirty now. We'll have to wash the car again. <laughs> so we done the, I think it's called Bins Track. Um, wasn't that bad, like some sand, sand crossings and stuff, but um, I think just the little bit of rain actually helped the road. Yeah, it was nice and soft. Most of it was good. There's just a couple of really rocky, rocky crossings that I've come across. Uh, when I was talking about my totem, so my pop was a, well, is, sorry, I'm not going to say was because he still is. Um, he has passed, but... Yeah, he is a mighty mighty Wamba Wamba man uh, with, yeah, our traditional lands go all the way from Lake Mungo, so the Willandra Lakes region, right down to, uh, through Bar Arnold and all of that stuff, down to Swan Hills. So yeah, that side, the Wamba side of my pop, that's his totem, so, which is obviously my totem. Um, yeah. The ghost gum is found in tropical and arid regions of Northern Australia, mainly in the Northern Territory and in the Huron. This thing's huge. That's massive. I'll go stand in front of it and Sarah will get a photo of me just for scale. Like it's... Look, this is out the middle of the nowhere. It's in really good health condition too. And there's another one over there that looks like he's gonna get just as big. This one, this one's root system must be massive. Beer clock. It's what? Beer clock. Beer clock. be in the car for five <laughs> hours. It's 
Well, we didn't show you the campsite uh, yesterday because we rocked up a bit too late. So, anyways, this is it. It's actually really nice. They're all drive-throughs. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to drive out of this one because it's like it's too sharp of a bend. Um, so probably the van like, will take out one of the yeah. posts. So I think I just back out. It's only 30 meters to reverse mm -hmm. just here. To keep it simple. Don't make life difficult. Yeah. Um, very basic parks uh, campground. I think it costs us about 10 bucks a night. Uh, they just got, yeah, fire pits, tables and stuff, um, just a drop toilet. Obviously, we're just using the van toilet. Um, but just the location, it's so beautiful. So this one's the Panorama Campground out at the East McDonald Ranges. Uh, yeah, so this one can fit like caravans, um, pretty much any full drivey off-road um, van or car, but stunning. So we're gonna do uh, the Trofina, I think it's called, Gorge Walk, either later this afternoon or tomorrow morning, so. Yeah, they've got like barbecues and everything out here, so it's very good. Um, everything you need for bush camping anyway. It's a bit of luxury, actually. I made chicken and corn <laughs> soup. <laughs> She's laughing because she didn't. I made it yesterday. And I'm just hungry. So am I. <laughs> Don't! <laughs> Louie, come on, Someone let's go. Someone that people painted. <laughs> there you go, grab your hand. You walk with Mama? Yeah. Good boy. He's twinning with dad. Yeah, he is. Look where you walk. Dad, you should be wearing a grey jumper. I'm giving that to him. Yeah. I'll let him have a walk to warm up. There's the ridge walk. So you can walk all along the ridge from Trofina Gorge here all the way down to the John Hayes um, rock holes. And on the sign back there, it said it's like a five hour one way hike, but you can go along the whole top of the ridge, which would be absolutely amazing. But obviously we're not going to that. attempt that with children. Sarah just finished the roast. She put it on at four. It's now just after seven, so about three hours at 210 or 20 in the hour little oven. And this thing's come out of <laughs> an absolute pearl. This lamb has Look came out beautifully compared to Dad's one at Palaru in the fire where it was cremated. <laughs> yes, I cremated a lamb roast. The little fire pit at our house, I had that in one of our four, four and a half ounce camp ovens. It was just way too hot, completely cooked it. I remember the day when I lifted it out of the fire pit, the, it had no weight at all. It's, the aluminium had more weight than I had it wrapped in. 
But anyway, yeah, this looks amazing. The kids have already smashed theirs. He's playing with trees. He's flicking water on me. This is how we contain Louie in his in a baby seat in a high chair. <laughs> it works a treat. <laughs> Probably not ideal, mate. You're flicking it all over and playing clothes. Maybe you should. Well, that's that's how we get away with a high chair in a caravan. It works. It's <laughs> <laughs> always the way. The weather looks amazing the day you're going to leave. Yeah. I'll back out because I can't get out going. Can't let them bring you down. Still. Silence will drown the sound the How are you supposed to hear me with the windows up? Huh? How are you supposed to hear me with the windows up? Someone giving good directions knows how to do proper hand signals. It wouldn't be a problem. Yeah, hand signals like this. Yeah, I did it, man. <laughs> <laughs> so we've just come to look at Jesse Gap. Um, it says that yeah, Aboriginal women and children should not view the artwork uh, on the rocks. So we'll go for a walk, but we won't go into where the rock art is. Henry might have a look if he can get there. Um, but also, just yesterday when we went out to um Nadala um gorge we had a chat to one of the rangers last night that come round and uh we asked about that gorge um and i said what's the go with it why can't um is there a story behind why the women and stuff can't go past there and um, basically they just said it's men's business um and it's a men's place so um, no Aboriginal women and children are allowed um, past that way. So yeah, I'm actually glad we didn't go and it's very like this. Um, I've never come across areas where they have signs like that. So it's actually very good that they do um, put it on there. So it shows how important it is when you go into national parks uh, whether you're Aboriginal or not, um, read the signs. If traditional owners are saying don't go here or don't go there, don't take photographs, uh, all of that stuff, just listen. Respect their wishes. Um, and it's for the better of yourself, I think. And we're definitely not going to teach our children um, to disrespect others and break rules. Nah, the rock art's a fair bit in, um, but we can have a look here. Yeah, that should, that's fine. I actually looked up and did a bit of research about um, the Nadala Gorge last night when I got back and there's hundreds of rock carvings. Um, I didn't see photos or, any, or anything, but I was reading about it and there's hundreds of rock carvings um, in the side of the gorge and on the walls and everything. So it would have been amazing to see, uh, but yeah, it's it's men's business, and um, no. I'm gonna have to tell maybe my brothers or something to come check it out. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'll put his sandals on. I was cheating. Jump, 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 j
Go! Jump! Go! Jumpy, jumpy, jump. jump. <laughs> yeah, no. Nah. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs>